when we put that together, power of prayer is using the authority in God's word, asking for our requests and asking him to help us. The Bible tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing is made. In him is life, and the life was with all kinds of men. The light shines in, into the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, and it will never be. And with the same word he said in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, Call to me and I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things that you have not seen. And we all know knowledge is power. And prayer is using the authority, is the master key. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he started in prayer and ended with prayer. He also made this promise in John 15 verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. Amen. As humans, we dive into the verse that says, we dive into the verse that says, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. But we skip the part that says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, what God is telling us here is that we should study his words and pray according to his will. And if we have and ask and make our petition known to him, he will surely answer us. Amen. Knowing that if you pray and you did not see result, don't, don't give up or back down. Just keep praying according to his will. He will answer. His answer may not be yes immediately, but it's to the best interest. Maybe there's a lesson we need to learn in achieving what we're asking for. But believe you, and me, it will surely come true. Amen. Our answered prayers may be delayed, but it will never tarry. Amen. When he speaks, his word has to accomplish that which is sent to do. We must never underestimate the power of prayer. God's help is available to all Christians. It's available to everyone because he's our creator. In Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer... But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. I tell you, a prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Just like the Israelites, they kept praying. They did not relent. And God sent them help and delivered them out of Egypt. We all know the story. Let's examine some of the powers of prayer in the Bible. When Peter was in jail... The people gathered together and interceded on his behalf. They kept praying. While they were praying, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in prison and said, Peter, get up. First he thought he was dreaming. And then when he got up, the chain fell and he was able to escape from prison. Anna, a woman who was terribly troubled because she was barren, she poured out her soul to the Lord asking for a child. And the Lord answered her. She gave back to a bouncing foot, a bouncing baby boy and she dedicated him to the Lord. Elijah was a person just like you and I. He prayed that it would not rain and it did not rain for three and a half years. Again he prayed again and then there was rain. We have this in our hymns, hymn book. Elijah we all know the story of Tabitha. She was sick and died and then Peter went to Joppa where a body laid. When he got there, the women were outside weeping, crying. And Peter knelt down and prayed to the Lord. And when he prayed, he turned and looked at the body and said, Tabitha, immediately the Bible tells us she got up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ezekiah is another one in the Bible. When he was sick and laying on his bed, God sent prophet Isaiah to him. And he said, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for thou shalt not live and die. Ezekiah did not give up. He did not panic. He knows the Lord is so. He knows he has a personal relationship with God. And then, brethren, when we get such message, God forbid, we should not be calling our shepherd. We are Christians. Jesus Christ came. He showed us the way. We should follow his pattern. This is the time for us to get on our knees and keep praying. Not calling the shepherd and leaving unnecessary message. Oh, daddy, please call me. Mommy, is that you? Or calling the children. Oh, I need that. He's urgent. Or calling Nigeria. I need a prophet that is spiritually filled or prophetess. 
Why are you running back and forth? You have this in you. It lives in here. All you need to do is tap into it. Get on your knees. Talk to your father. And he will surely answer you. When Ezekiah, when, when Ezekiah was told that he would die, this was a sick man and he was confined in his bed. He did not give up. In Isaiah 38 verse 2 through 3 says, Ezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and I, and I, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so. In verse 4 and 5, Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Ezekiah, Thou says the Lord, the God of thy father David, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thee 15 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, that is the power of prayer. You don't need to run to any prophet or prophetesses. You don't need to go to any abolish. You don't need to go anywhere. Just get on your knees. The distance between your prayer being answered is the distance between your knee and the ground. Just get on your knees and pray. Call on him and he will surely answer. Amen. Call on him, tell him your situation. Just say, Lord, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Asking in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Asking in the need of prayer. He is God, he's your creator. He knows you by name. He will answer. Just call, just call, tell him. You don't have to tell somebody and then they'll pick up the phone and you call the next person. Oh, guess what? This is what your friend said. This is what they're going through. He is your creator. Just <clears throat> call him and he will surely answer. Amen. We all can attest to this in this church. Through the powers of prayers, we have broken the shackles of Satan. Amen. We have conquered death. Yes. It has brought us healing. Yes. It has defeated demons. It has restored sight, changes hearts. It has healed the wound and granted us wisdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Bible urges us to pray in spirit without season. When his disciples ask him, Lord, Rabbi, how do we pray? This is in Matthew 9, 13. The Lord's Prayer. It's not just for us to memorize or recite to him. It's an example of how we should go before our Creator. First, by acknowledging Him as your Lord and Savior, worshiping Him, trust, confess, petition, protection, etc. Just speak to Him in your own words. When we're sick, we go to the doctor's office. The doctor cannot diagnose you unless you explain in your own words the symptoms you're going through. If you tell him you have a back pain and you have a headache, he's going to prescribe something for the back. You have to tell him the symptoms. Same thing here. Go to God in your own words and just lay your petition before him and it will be well with our soul. Yeah. Let me tell you a story about a little girl. This happened a few months ago. It was in New Jersey and it was on the news. The little girl was walking home alone from school and she has to go through this park. At the entrance of the park, she looked and she saw a man. To her, the man looks funny and she was scared. She said, God, please, don't let this man take me. Guide me home. That's what she said. And then she went home. That same evening, that same man <coughs> caught another little girl, raped her and killed her. And he was caught. He was on the news. And when they asked her, because, you know, all these, uh, they have this area, camera, that watches things. And then they said, what happened? Why did you let the little girl go? The first one that walked by, he go, she wasn't alone. A man was walking with her, and when they asked the little girl, the little girl said, I came home alone. That's the power of prayer. So brethren, let us teach our children the ways of the Lord and pray fervently. And if anyone should ask, how do I tap into the power of prayers? Tell them to read the Bible, to apply it on a daily basis, getting familiar with his words, allowing his words to minister into their soul. Only then can they apply it under any circumstances. When you ask in prayer, you will receive without anger, malice, and provided you have faith, a pure heart, and not doubting, but pray according to his will. Only then will Luke 11 verse 9 apply. I tell you, ask, and it shall be given to you. 
Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. Remember our Lord and, Je our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has broken the barrier between us and God. He has given us the privilege to go directly before him. You can go to his throne and just say, Father, here I am, here I am. use me and you will. In John 1, 5, 14, and this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if you ask anything according to his will, he is. Answered prayers are not based on magical formulas. It's not, you know, the content or the, you have to use a certain word. It depends on the content of your word. It depends on you. God already has your attention. All he's waiting for is you. He's standing by the door. He's knocking. All you have to do is open the door and let him in. That's all he's asking. And Jesus rebuked those who pray using repetition. In Matthew 6, 7, 8. And when you pray, do not babble like pagans. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows. He knows. He knows what you need before you ask him. He is God, he is your creator, he is the Alpha, he is the Omega, he is the beginning, he is the end. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. We all here can attest to the power of prayers in this church. The faucet of twins was granted through the power of prayers. Same with the second one. And through the power of prayers... A lot of things were done for us in this church. Among us here, when they thought all hope was lost, they went to a cousin's wedding in Nigeria and they got hooked. Now they are married with children. And some, they dated for months and nothing to show forth. And then, through the power of prayers, they met the bones of their bones. They dated only for three months and they were engaged. And now they are happily married. Some were told they would never walk again. And through the powers, power of prayer, they are walking and dancing. Some took exams and failed by one question. They took the same exams and got everything correctly, including the bonus questions. This is the second month of 2014, and to date we have three weddings. Last Friday, a naming ceremony, and by God's grace, by, the, by juvenile harvest of this year, we will have six principal chairpersons. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have gainful employment, residency of joy, good health, all granted to this church through the power of prayers. As Christians, we have the master key. All we need to do is study our scriptures and apply them on a daily basis. Let it show in us. Let the people around us know that we are Christians. We are Christ-like. John 14, 13 says, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Again and again, our Lord is calling us to himself. Come to me, come to me. Take your problem to the Lord in prayer, and he will surely answer us. Amen. Amen. We feed our souls. We, we, we need to feed our souls with his word, so that we could be equipped to use it in times of trouble. We feed our body five times a day. We have breakfast, lunch, dinner. We have snacks in between meals. We need to do the same for our, our, our soul. In James 5, 13 through 14 says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And we all here can attest to that through three members and congregation of prayer. The Lord has done miraculous things for us. In conclusion, rejoice always. Pray without season. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and I. Let our faith be like that of a shield. And we'll be able to stop all flaming arrows of the evil. Let God's saving power be an element. And his word is sword from the Holy Spirit. We must never stop praying. Prayer is a shield to our soul. A sacrifice to God and a cause for Satan. Prayer is a will of a prayer is an effort of will. Our prayer and God's mercy are like two buckets in a well. When one descend, the other one ascend. Brethren, when we pray according to God's will, our prayers are unstoppable. Amen. Amen. My God is a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. He will never fail. Never fail.
will, he will do what he says he will do. He will do what he promised to do. I can see him walking in a favor. I can see him bringing in a miracle. I can see him fighting all our battles. He will do what he says he will do.